Hey, Mr. Cameraman, watch this. Oh! Everyone knows easy. Rubber boots, shorts, mullet hair. Oh yeah, everybody knows easy. Any way you go around, everybody knows him. He's definitely one of a kind. Like, there's nobody else like him, and he's not afraid to go for what he wants. He has the alligators he deals with. He's pretty much not afraid of anything. I've heard a lot about the tour and about ZZ. He came about 11 years ago, and he caught an alligator, wrestled it on the boat, and our kids will never forget it. You can tell that he was a pro wrestler back in the day. He's got that wrestling type the showmanship. He got out of wrestling to come back and do the Swamp Tours. His mom was not doing well. It's a very small town, and ZZ is for sure a local legend. I'm like a Cajun Aquaman, bruh. Instead of fish, I control alligators and turtles. My domain's a lot smaller than the ocean, but I'm still pretty badass. You know? Hey, you know it smells worse than a bucket of uh, rotten fish? An empty wallet. <laughs> Look at him, he knows. He already knows. Up, up, up. You can really hear the bite force that they have. All right, and that noise I'm making, it sounds like a baby alligator, but you can't train an alligator like a cat or a dog, but you can train them to come to you or turn around <clears throat> or stop. Whenever I'm not making that noise, he knows I'm not about to feed him. However, when I make that noise and I got something in my hand, oh, oh. See how he starts to come to me? Because then he knows that it's feeding time. Oh. Well, my name is Zamariah Loop. Everybody calls me ZZ. I own and run Zam Swamp Tours in Southern Louisiana. The town I live in is called Bayou Buff and everybody thinks it's called Kramer. However, I legitimately live on the bayou. So it's called Bayou Buff to me and all the people that live, you know, remotely close to me. I'm somewhat of a small town hero, but with a really, really, really large name because I've had my hand in so many different cookie jars. So I'm a third generation swamp tour owner, but I'm a seventh generation Cajun. My grandmother, Azima, which we all called her Zam. She was the original Zam. Before this place was a swamp tour, it was a skinning facility. My grandfather was one of the state's biggest fur and hide merchants. And my grandfather was getting older, and the fur business wasn't making quite as much money as it was back in the 70s and 80s. It was around the early 90s, and my mom had the idea to start a swamp tour. Then we started getting alligators in the back ponds and all this other stuff, right? And then they built this empire, which is known as Zam Swamp Tours. All right, you guys, we're gonna get started on our little memory here. If you don't know by now, this girl's name is Miss Kelly. We're gonna go ahead and follow her right down the driveway with the big Zam Swamp Tour sign. Go and get to migrating is what we're gonna do here. I got the caboose. I like to be behind everybody. Make sure no predators sneak up on y'all. I gotta, gotta watch them alligators. They're pretty sneaky around here. So this turtle is an alligator snapping turtle. And he, she weighs about 140 pounds. And so she's about 140 years old. That's what my grandfather told me. Uh, so they grow about a pound a year. So it's like a Cajun fingernail clipper. You gotta be, you gotta be quick. Still got all 10 fingers though. But this turtle's awesome. This is my original girlfriend. Um, I was a lonely child. <laughs> so when I grew up, I was always outside, you know. Instead of having a Nintendo or an Xbox or a PlayStation, I had a stick. <laughs> that was that was me. But I was always after something, whether it be a fish or a dragonfly or a squirrel or a rabbit. That guy was my dad. He looks like a Cajun Fabio. Got really long blonde hair, and I was four years old and wanted to take after my dad. So I went on the barge and I grabbed these two little alligators and I had a mullet but even back then. I still got one now. And, but this picture was taken at the same day that one was. And it's kind of like me and my dad were both frozen in time. And then as I grew up, being in a tour setting, I talked to a lot of adults that were coming here on a tour from around the world, whether that be from France or that be from England or Australia or just wherever they're from. And I learned a lot about the world without even going in. That's what I mean by their ambush predators. All right, you guys, let's go on a boat. 
We came about 11 years ago with my kids and another friend, and Zizi gave the tour. He was a kid. He was probably 14 years old, and he caught an alligator, wrestled it on the boat, and our kids will never forget it. The parts of the tour that I think is the most surprising is the knowledge that Z has. Alligators open their mouth to exhaust heat. Cypress has a sap that prevents the wood from rotting. A 10-foot alligator, you'll get about 80 to 100 pounds of clean, defatted, deep bone meat. Gasala shawi that had that bosco yo, manger de wawaron. And an alligator has an eyelid. It's called a nicotating membrane. You can make alligator jalapeno poppers with slices of peach. I don't know if you've ever had that, but there's a reason I don't have abs. I think it's amazing that he's got a 12-foot alligator as a pet in the front yard. Actually, there's three of them today. Alligators are fast, huh? <laughs> you can tell that he was a pro wrestler. He's got that wrestling type, the showmanship. Man, look at the muscles on that guy. You seen that? Jesus Christ. I was on a show called Tough Enough, and I never went to Monday Night Raw, and I never went to SmackDown, but I was in NXT for, I'd say, about two and a half years. It's easy. King of the Bayou. That was my name. I used to wear an alligator in WWE. We skinned the 11 foot alligator from the belly up, so it made like a cape. Everybody wanted to be around me. I had good vibes. I was just happy all the time. I was just excited to be there. I'm 6'1", and in life, I'm a big guy. But when you put me on a platform with these ex-MMA, ex-NFL, it's, it's a whole new world. And within that time frame, something happened to my mother. My mom actually never told me how sick she actually was because she didn't want that to hinder me coming back. So the amount of stress that my mom was going through put her in a bad way. Mom and dad, they wanted to retire. And when I came back from WWE is when I took over the Swamp Tour. I was around 21 at the time. I wasn't gonna let this place die with me, you know? I'm a third generation Swamp Tour owner and uh, as crazy as it might sound, this place is a family member to me because I grew up here. I know it's just an old building. And somebody from the outside world is going to look at it and say, man, what a piece of crap. Let's tear it down and build something nice. But if these walls could talk, you know, so. You guys want to know the most dangerous animal I work with? People. When I went to WWE, I got a lot of priceless experience. They taught me about being a person that people want to listen to and people want to follow and having an it factor. And I try to give the people on my swamp tours the best emotional roller coaster ride that I can. And it has helped my swamp tours tremendously. All right, now, I need a favor. I need all the kids eight and under to go to the front of the boat. I need y'all help. Go and get. Now, here's what's going to happen. We're going to count to three. And at the count of three, we're going to yell at this bridge for as long and as loud as we can. We are gonna be the horn ourselves. Y'all ready? ready? I know that wasn't any kind of good energy. Are you guys ready? Yeah, yeah we're ready. All right, everybody, ready? Cat, go on, Cal. One, two, three. Ah! No, y'all gotta be a little louder than that. <laughs> yeah, we did it together. All right. All right, everybody, come on, sit down. We're coming in hot. I want to save my world. And my world is rapidly declining because of coastal erosion and a lot of other things. But if I could have a platform that reaches millions of people and enough people hear me, we could do something to save what Louisiana is today. Cajun culture is one of the fastest dying breeds that we have. The Cajun language, the Cajun French, the broken down French, all the food that we cook, the way that we live, the animals that we skin, the ways we make money off of the land and live off the land, that's all disappearing. I want to build a life to where I can leave something behind. You don't need a wave to surf, you know that, huh? You know it on your home. Just a big, wild, friendly guy, a big teddy bear, you know, he loves life and loves doing what he's doing. The whole town's going to be him, always. He makes it fun and know why people love to go out in the swamps and enjoy the wildlife. So I'm glad he came back. This place, it's a way of life. It's a livelihood. It's a way to entertain. It's a way to save your world. It's a way to save your culture. And all roads lead back to home. I know that statement's kind of corny, but it's true. 
One of the tourists actually took this picture. This is when I got bit, I was 17 years old. This is the scar right there. Two teeth went in my hand like this and came out the bottom. This is the tooth that went in my hand. But like I said before, if you're an electrician, you're gonna get shocked. If you're a carpenter, you're gonna get some splinters. I'm an alligator wrestler, I'm a swamp tour owner. You're gonna get bit.